Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. In this video, I want to introduce the sulfides and thiols. Uh, you can see here several different examples of sulfur-containing compounds. Again, sulfur being one row below oxygen on the periodic table, it has a lot of similarities. So we refer to a sulfur-hydrogen compound as a thiol similar to an alcohol. So if it's a one carbon group, we would refer to this as methane thiol. If it's a sulfur analog of an ether molecule where we have carbons on either side, we name it very similar to how we name ethers. Instead of using ether, we use the word sulfide. So in this case, dimethyl sulfide would be the name of that molecule. And proteins and amino acids contain sulfur as well. This is the amino acid cysteine, and you can see that there's a thiol group that's present in cysteines, and it's very important in protein structures. Some of these sulfur compounds are very pungent and very strong. So for example, uh, methane thiol and dimethyl sulfide, these are added to natural gas to make them smell so that you can detect gas leaks. Propane and methane are odorless. In order to provide some odor to them so that we can know if there's an unsafe gas leak, these smelly compounds are added to natural gas. Sulfur compounds are naturally occurring, and so this diallyl disulfide, notice there's a sulfur-sulfur bond in this molecule. This is found in garlic, and if that's metabolized in your body, it actually makes allyl methyl sulfide, which is responsible for your garlic breath after eating your sulfur compounds. And sulfur compounds have very good nucleophiles, as we saw in the previous chapter. So doing SN2 substitution on things like iodomethane is a way to make sulfides from the thiol compounds. Well, just as an aside, I should mention that sulfur compounds are present in amino acids. The cysteine has a thiol side chain in it, and if cysteine is incorporated into a protein, this can undergo reactions. If you have two sulfur thiol groups in a protein, those could be oxidized to form a sulfur-sulfur bond, or what we refer to as a disulfide. That can link up amino acids in proteins and affect the structure of proteins, and that's quite interesting. For example, um, proteins in your hair actually contain thiol compounds which are linked together. So in the proteins in your hair, you have these sulfur-sulfur bonds between various cysteines. And those can be broken, what we refer to as breaking the cross-links. This is what happens when you get a permanent for your hair. You can add a chemical to break all the sulfur cross-links and it disconnects proteins in your hair. You curl the hair up and then treat it with an oxidant such as hydrogen peroxide to reform sulfur-sulfur bonds between different sulfur thiol groups. In that way you can make that curling in the hair much more permanent. And it is this technology that made the 1980s so very awesome.